Hello, everyone. Welcome to Carter Spatial Spotlight, our weekly 15 minute webinar where we talk about the spatial analytics with the Carter platform. My name is Ernesto Martinez, and I work as a product manager at Carto. And today, on the last special spotlights of the year, I'm going to be talking about uh, how we can optimize our spatial analytics by leveraging generative AI capabilities in workflows. So we're going to be running a, a fairly simple analysis, but then we will, be, we will use the generative AI capabilities to help us understand the results and generate some content that we'll later use to create a map where we will share the results of our analysis. So let me share my screen. So um, we're going to start with, uh, with this uh, uh, workflow that I have already started, where we have some area of interest uh, defined around the city of Boston. These are just some custom polygons that I created beforehand, uh, but it could be anything uh, that, with, that, that matches um, a polygon. What we have done with this is we have applied a, an A3 polyfill that has transformed these polygons into smaller A3 grids. This will help us um, um, enrich uh, our, our custom geographies with some sociodemographic data that we have here. This data is available through the Carto um, Data Observatory. And as you can see, it contains a grid of the whole United States at the same resolution that, um, that we have used for our area of interest um, next to Boston. So if we zoom all the way in, we'll see that the hexagons here are of the same size than the ones we have created here. being of the same size and resolution will also help us match um, one with the, with the other and enrich them with sociodemographic data. So going back to the complete data set, we'll see that it contains the H3 index and also some uh, population, some data around population, uh, gender distribution, age distribution also by, by um, gender, it also has some um, climatic uh, variables like the minimum temperature, maximum temperature, or average temperature for every month, and some other uh, variables that are readily available for, um, for enrichment. So once we have our area of interest uh, converted into H3 grid, we can use the join component to um, to add some um, sociodemographic variables to our area of interest. I have already computed this part of the analysis. So I can take a look at, uh, at the map here and check that it contains the variables that uh, I will be using for uh, analysis later. So I have all the variables here. And I can take a look at them and see, for example, what's the total population, uh, what's the maximum population population in each of the in, in one of the cells, average population of the cells, etc. So now that we have the data that we need and, and the data that we will use the um, generative AI capabilities on. We, the next step we need to, to do is create a prompt that we will send to the Generative AI uh, API. Um, and for that, we will use the create column component. So if I just type in on the search bar, I can find it. And with this component, I can rename it here like generate prompt. What I will do here is concatenate some um, text that I will be typing with variables that I will be take, uh, uh, taking from 
um, from, from the existing uh, data that I was showing before. So as anytime you are working with, a, with an AI prompt, you need to give it uh, some context of the request that you will make. So I will tell, tell it that I need an accessibility to resources score for, for each area. So uh, this will treat every hexagon individually. So give me an accessibility to resource score for this area based on population density and the number of resources. Then I will give it uh, the, the, the data that it needs, like this, uh, giving uh, the, the total population of each hexagon, but also information about some existing resources in the area, like, like this. Uh, uh, it will have context about how many retail businesses, how many education centers, how many food and drinks establishments, and how many healthcare facilities. And then to end with the prompt generation, I will uh, let it know what's the format that I want to use that I, that I am expecting in the response. So the format of the response should be the following, I want a score on, the, on a one to 10 uh, range, and then an explanation in no, in no more than 20 words. So once I have uh, it, I have this ready, I can just run my workflow. This, this should be fairly quick. It will be just, it will just go over uh, all the rows in the, in the previous node, and it will generate the prompt uh, is just in the way that I specified. So we have an individual prompt for each of the hexagons. So the AI will have the context uh, individually for each of them, and it will have the population and the number of resources of each type that we added. Now, and here comes the most interesting part, I, I have the ML generate text uh, component. I can just drop it in the canvas. And first thing uh, it, uh, it asks me, well, we can take a look at the documentation for this first. So this is the documentation around uh, about the, the component. Uh, it, we can see that it's actually a uh, wrapper uh, over the ML generate text uh, function in, in BigQuery that will be that will be um, used on each row of the input table. It, we have all the inputs here, and we have also a link to the BigQuery reference where we can learn about the different um, uh, settings that we can use to tweak the response as the max output tokens, the temperature, top P and top key, key parameters that we can use to, uh, to tweak uh, the results. So once we have uh, this ready, we need to specify a name for the model. You need to have your model already uh, prepared and trained. And so you just need to specify it here. On the prompt column, we need to select uh, the one that we created before and click on run again. Again, this is uh, querying the ML direct text function um, on each row. And it's done already. Um, we have, again, all the columns in our data. This is the prompt that we have generated, and we have a JSON object with um, both the content of the uh, of the of the um, um, prediction and also some metadata that might be useful to evaluate the quality uh, of the of the result. And then on a separate column that we call ML generate text content, we have the response in just the format that we uh, that we asked. Um, uh, that we asked for. So, for example, for um, 
um, for we have a score of one over 10, and it says that there are sparse resources and, and high population density that limits accessibility. Uh, we have another that is for four over 10 with limited resources for the population size, but not severely lacking. Uh, let's look for a higher um, for a higher grade here, like seven out of 10, diverse resources with moderate population density. So as you can see, the, um, the generate text uh, function has understood the context of each uh, of each area of each of the hexagons, and it has evaluated the the total population um, uh, of each of them. Since the, the hexagons have a regular area, uh, we can we can uh, talk about population density here, and it has also evaluated the amount of resources that it each area has available. So here, for example, we have. Um, uh, 4,000 people living in the area, and there are 38 retail shops. Uh, I compare them to three and zero uh, here, so we'll see that this is the one that got a higher um, higher score. So we have already used our um, our component to to make the AI understand the context context of each of the hexagons. And we next step here will be to see how this looks on a map and how we can share the results of this um, uh, of this process on on a, on a web map. So if we just click on the on the map tab of the preview, select H three here and create map. This will this will open Builder with the preloaded uh, data source, and we will use that to generate a, a map very quickly where we can uh, check the results of this analysis. It will just take a bit. Here we go. These are our initial areas of interest that we have converted to, to a, an H3 grid, later enriched with sociodemographic data, and then we have used the generative AI capabilities to add a um, um, uh, rich description of the area and a basic scoring based on population density and availability of resources. So now let's use uh, Builder to create, to, to help us understand our data better. So for the color of each of the hexagons, we're going to be using the total population. So it's the sum of the population here. And I'm going to select a quantile uh, scale that will give us a better idea of uh, differences um, in the area. Um, let's improve the cartography a little bit. And now, in order to leverage the results that we got from the AI, we can uh, jump to the interactions um, tab. And on hover, I want this style to appear, and I want I want to find the content column so that this will show me the the score that was calculated. But in order to have a better context, we will keep adding some uh, more columns here. So I want the sum of the population. I want the number of retail uh, shops. I want the healthcare facilities. I want the education centers. And I want the food and drink. Um, uh, let me just edit this very quickly. Education. Per retail So once we have this ready, we have our map ready to share. And as we can see, we'll have the score we got from, um, from the um, uh, generate text uh, function and the rest of the information uh, available here.
next step will be to share our map, make it available to the public, copy public link, and this is now ready to be shared. Oh, sorry about that. Here's my public map showing the results that I got from the generate text uh, capabilities. So that's it for for today. Thank you very very much for your attention, and I hope you found this uh, useful. And I'll see you next year on on uh, on the Carter Special Spotlights. Thanks again, and um, bye-bye.